Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in RecFest 2, currently in Early Access. We're going to start by optimizing Windows. After that, we're going to look at your Radiant Pyrimeter or NVIDIA, depending on your GPU. And at the end, we're going to optimize the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then uh, with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now... Honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance. And honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing uh, I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS. Super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um, overlay. So NVIDIA overlay, I really recommend to deactivate this one. Sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering. You're losing some FPS with it. So I really recommend to deactivate it. Also, we're going to go to the control panel. I'm going to show you some optimization that you can do. So we're going to go to the manage 3D setting first. So the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode. Make sure this one is at on. Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's 4 gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're going to struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radeon driver if you have a Radeon car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. This is pretty much it for the NVIDIA fan reader. Now let's go to the Radeon one. So now for Radeon card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. 
After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluent motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now inside of the game, so the game is currently in early access, so I hope they're going to push more uh, feature on the graphic setting. The first one in anti-aliasing, you have FSR over there, so they don't call it the uh, upscaling technique or whatever. So my recommendation is use uh, FSR tree. It's doing the job, honestly, the, the game looks very crisp with it. Uh, if you don't have it, just use FXAA if you're playing on a very old computer. Um, it, it, it does the job, honestly, MSAA in this game is very blurry, so go with FSR 3. No DLSS for now, no FSR 4 also, so currently this is pretty much what you can use. And the weird thing, you have the sharpening over there, and it's just disable or enable. You don't have any slider with a percentage that normally you have when you're using FSR or DLSS, so I guess they're gonna fix it later. After that, uh, anisotropic filtering and texture quality really depend on the amount of VRAM that you have on your GPU. So if you have more than 6 gig of VRAM, just go ultra high. 4 gig, medium high. Less than 4 gig, go with low and medium. Let's go back like this. 
After that, Shadow Quality Mark Condition is go with medium. You're going to expect a nice 7% boost. Uh, high versus medium, you have a pretty decent amount of, of FPS. At low also, and if you disable, you can gain a total of 13 to 14% in your FPS, but the game looks very flat without it. So my recommendation is go with medium. Reflection and effect quality, I really recommend to go with low with both. Uh, you're going to stabilize a lot your FPS. It will be a lot smoother. So my recommendation is go with low. Car detail, you can run easily I uh, Ultra, you're going to lose a nine, like a, a 3% uh, on your FPS. It's not worth it. You don't see a big difference between Ultra and High. And after that, on low, I don't see a big difference. It's like 1%. So my recommendation is stay at I. Steering quality, just go normal. Grass density and ambient occlusion, you can run medium. It's a good spot. Ambient occlusion, less than medium. The game looks very flat without it. So let's go with medium. God raise this one, tank your FPS like crazy. Uh, if you compare Ultra to Disable, you can expect a nice 14% boost in your FPS. So definitely just Disable this one. It can be cool like when you're playing an adventure game, but in a racing game, just Disable it. You will not necessarily see it. Skin marks quality, go with normal. Motion blur, I don't always disable this in any game. I don't like this effect. If you want like, like a crystal clear image, you don't want motion blur. Vignetting, disable also. And like I said, the uh, sharpening, just go with enable because uh, anti-aliasing with FSR without the sharpening is a bit blurry. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my guide. I'm pretty sure you're going to push some more patch. Honestly, the game looks very nice. Uh, the game runs also well. So if you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.